DNA walks of polyglutamine. Neurodegen <laughs> Neurodegenerative diseases is the title of Marie's project. I bet she can tell it a bit better than I am. Um, she comes from the University College London and has already participated in the national contest Young in 2019. For her project, she modeled the DNA sequences of two neurodegenerative diseases as DNA walks using Python. We welcome Marie Barbaron on stage for more explanations on her project. Hi, my name is Marie, and today I'm going to be presenting my project on the DNA walks of polyglutamine neurodegenerative diseases. So let's start with a bit of context. You might be familiar with Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common cause of dementia or memory loss worldwide. Or you might know about Parkinson's disease, which is a disease that affects movement and uh, typically involves a lot of shaking and difficulty with coordinating movement. Or you might know about ALS, which also affects movement and your ability to walk, talk, and chew. So as you can imagine, living with any of these diseases is really tough, both for the patients and for their families or carers. But now, imagine having all three of these diseases at the same time. That's what it's like to have Huntington's disease. Huntington's is a disease affecting your movement and cognition. And it typically starts in mid-adult life, but it can also affect children. So the difficult part with Huntington's is that once symptoms start, start, it progressively worsens over time as it is a neurodegenerative disease. What causes this? Well, Huntington's is a genetic disease caused by a mutation in your DNA. DNA, as you may know, is the instructions coding for proteins that make up cells and organs. We all have a protein called Huntington that's very important for brain function and um, neural connections. Normally, the DNA coding for this Huntington protein has around 20 to 30 CAG bases repeated over and over again. But for someone of Huntington's disease, they have over 40 CAG bases. There's actually a lot of diseases caused by having too many CAG bases in your DNA. Altogether, these diseases are known as polyglutamine diseases. Here's an example of a DNA sequence of a protein with, um, affected by a polyglutamine disease. Can you spot how many CAG repeats there are? Can you spot where the CAG bases are? It's really hard to do so because DNA is so long and there's so many information. And this is only a really short part of a DNA sequence. This is where DNA walks comes in. A DNA walk is like a drawing that represents a DNA sequence as a drawing. So instead of writing CAG, you would have a line going forwards, up, and back, because each base in the DNA is represented by a line going in a certain direction. Doing this by hand would take way too long. So in my project, I used a Python code to do this for me. Here's a Python code that does a DNA walk for a for the protein coding for Huntington. It's now much easier to tell where the CAG bases are, and it's also much easier to see of a difference between someone affected by Huntington's disease and unaffected. I repeated this procedure for different um, polyglutamine diseases, and here are some of the DNA walks I obtained. But there's one more problem. How can we quantify these DNA walks? How can we compare between each of these drawings? Well, the answer is fractal analysis. So fractals are complex shapes, such as this one. It's hard to measure its length or surface area because the shape is very irregular. So you can use fractal analysis to calculate a fractal dimension. A fractal dimension close to one means the shape is more like a line and less complex. 
but a higher fractal dimension, closer to two, means the shape is more complex and more like a 2D shape, filling up a space. Going back to our DNA walks, we can calculate the fractal dimension of each DNA walk using another computer program. And this is what I did here. This is really cool because now it can give us a unique value for each DNA walk. But more interestingly, we find that for sequences with more CAG repeats, their, the fractal dimension increases too. And this is the case for both polyglutamine diseases I studied. So why is this important? Well, DNA walks and um, fractal analysis is super quick, easy, and non-invasive to um, calculate or um, analyze a DNA sequence. And interestingly, the, for people with polyglutamine diseases, the more CAG repeats you have in the DNA sequence, uh, the earlier the disease might manifest itself, or the more severe the symptoms may be. So this means that using fractal analysis and DNA walks to study polyglutamine diseases could give us really important insights clinically for prognostic use. For example, maybe it could be used in the future in genetic counseling or as part of a treatment plan to predict disease outcome in patients. But this investigation left me with more questions. For example, here's the DNA walk of a coronavirus spike protein, the part of a coronavirus that infects your cells. As you know, when the virus mutates quite a lot. And when this virus mutates, how does that affect its DNA walk? Can the change that is caused by the mutation be quantified by fractal analysis? There's so many applications to DNA walks and fractal analysis in biology. So I would really encourage anyone interested to have a look at these programs like Python and ImageJ that are freely available online because using computer informatics and medicine can really give us some interesting insights. Thank you.